I'm Elizabeth McDonald, web reporter for GC42. And I'm here with Danielle Leana, who is newly in congregational ministry in Calgary, That's just right. arrived a few weeks ago. But you're here at the 42nd General Council as an intercultural observer. So tell us, what have you been seeing as you've observed this General Council? Mm -hmm. Thanks for the invitation. So much of the work of intercultural um, observation has to do with invitation. So it's good to be in this space with you um, and to have the council acknowledge what an important um, role it is to lift up the intercultural lens in the church. Um, the intercultural observer role, first of all, is really to be observant to and help hold the space for the ways in which we engage difference and diversity as a council doing this exceptionally um, challenging and joyful work of the church. Um, we've been noticing a lot of things. Uh, it's an ongoing experiment that's evolving as we raise up questions of mutuality, of power sharing, justice, voice, presence, and deep listening. One of the things we've been doing really well is um, lifting up a covenant of, of engagement. And you have a yes on, it, on, <laughs> on every table. The commissioners have before them this covenant yes. based on seven indigenous teachings, yes. and they also have this intercultural lens. Questions: What's the context? Who will be affected? How will this increase equity? Now, how have you seen commissioners responding? to this invitation to engage in the work of GC42 using an intercultural lens. Mm -hmm. I want to start with an appreciation to the commissioners um, for, first of all, may I? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> using Well the Covenant, which, is, which speaks to um, us practicing our hope for uh, reconciliation with the indigenous peoples. So lifting this up in every worship service, lifting this up around their table, both in language and in physical action. The lens of which you speak, however, um, to put on, to say it truthfully, um, has not been engaged with the kind of depth that I may have personally hoped for. These are challenging questions. Um, one here you have is, what are the unspoken cultural norms and values that you bring to the table and, that, and through which you assess the proposal before you? That's really honest speak about who we are and to know ourselves deeply enough and to be honest about how our context informs what we're asked to vote on. It's deep work. The pace the rhythm, maybe even the format in which we are engaging with the proposals. Um, this, is, this is an exceptionally difficult and challenging layer to add to the work. Um, the commissioners are doing their best, and yet I believe we could do more. So again, I, I want to affirm that the role that Etienne Lesage, the other intercultural observer, and myself have, um, I think is critical to us continuing to evolve and move with a commitment to this kind of work because we need to practice, then to move to making it habit, then for it to hopefully evolve to a way of being one with another. And it's happening at a particular moment in United Church history. There's growing consensus here at this General Council and across the country that the church needs to change, it needs to become more flexible, more nimble, leaner, and smaller. And at the same time, there is a deep desire, a commitment yes. that there be room at the table mm -hmm. for the diversity of who we are. Mm -hmm. That the voices of indigenous people, francophones, other racialized and ethnocultural persons, that these voices be paid attention to. Yes. How do we live? effectively and faithfully yes. in the tension between these two desires yes. which don't easily fit together. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's a wise question. Um, one of the things that I think is important to lift up is that we're not, that the mandate of interculturality the church has embraced is not exclusively about proportional representation. It's more deep than that. It's about each person taking on the responsibility and ownership 
of, of um, deeply understanding this lens so that no matter who's at the circle or who may not be in a particular conversation, and we, we are careful to have proportional representation, we are, um, the responsibility is for all of us to be asking these kinds of questions because in asking them, our, pers our, our perspective shifts, right? To be aware that, hey, we are not necessarily as diverse as we could be. There may be a particular voice that's not here. What kind of questions do we need to ask? Who else might we need to consult to talk about? What other raw data do we need to bring to this table in order to make that happen? Having a person at the table, it, it, it is a, it's a tension, because we've been through a, a time in the church where we really went through tokenism and just thought we just needed the person there who looked the right way um, or spoke the right tongue to make it happen. Um, but now we're asking for a deeper sense of ownership around each individual lifting up and carrying the joyful responsibility of these kinds of questions and engagement. So what are you hoping commissioners will take back to their congregations, to their presbyteries, when they leave Corner Brook? Oh, I hope they're taking back a joy to say, hey, we are a church that wants to move and is moving in spaces of difference, engagement, and diversity. And the, um, the statement that says, we have work to do, and it's ours to do. And we have resources to engage, let's get, a, get, let's get on with it. Danielle, thank yes. you. Danielle Ayano, one of two intercultural observers here at the 42nd General Council. If you want to find out more about what's happening at GC42, go to gc42.ca.